A lot of the people here seem to be middle-aged. Can you speculate as to why younger people are not here? Well, I think it's difficult for them uh, to do such a thing, but I, I believe that it has more to do with they've been programmed by the liberal media and they've been programmed by our liberal schools. Our colleges and our universities and even our high schools uh, have fed them such ridiculous junk um, that they have no real concept of what their country was or where it's going. Uh, and I think that older people have lived the American dream and have seen this start to slip away to where their children and their grandchildren are not going to have the prosperity that they had or the opportunity. And so um, that's, that's what I think is going to take place here if we don't take this country back. Um, I think there are a lot of energized young people, but I think that they're not organized. They don't really know what to do. And I think as older generation, we may have not been able to communicate to them uh, how they can become involved. We remounted the vehicles for the return to Freeman FOB. If we would have been there a few minutes earlier, I bet we would have caught, we would have had us somebody. But I don't think it was just one person. Patrolling along the trail, something caught Greyhawk's eye, and we halted to investigate. It seems that Greyhawk found a food and water cache placed for the use of illegal immigrants or smugglers while waiting for a pickup. Our Minutemen organization, and we have a lot of times people ask us, well, who buys your equipment? Why do they pay you to do this? And people need to understand that we're all very concerned citizens. That's why we join these kind of organizations. There are other organizations similar to ours. But any equipment, our arms, night vision, radios, <clears throat> all the equipment that we carry and need, our clothing, what it takes to live out of the back of your pickup truck for four or five or six days, everything that we have, we have to buy ourselves. Continuing along, we soon spotted a half-full water bottle. Oh, you you want to get it? Yeah, it's half full. The patrol returned to Freeman FOB. There had not been enough sign to suggest a night operation in the area. It was decided that the evening sentinel operation would take place slightly further west, nearer Gila Bend. We would be just off I-8 and north of Santank Mountains. I deployed with Stoney and Roadrunner. The Sentinels were looking for sign of recent activity, which would indicate a good place to set up. If we encounter armed drug dealers, we just move away and call the Sheriff's Department. And they come in and do, we'll help them any way we can. We tell them exactly where, where they're at, what we've seen, how many people there are, if they're armed or not. We let them actually do the arresting. We do no, do, we do no arresting. We carry arms only for our own self-protection. Uh, many times if it's uh, just illegal immigrants, we do have some night, night vision 
if we purchase it ourselves. We get nothing handed to us. Every, every person you see out here has spent their own money on their, on their own equipment. We will identify, we'll call Border Patrol when we see immigrants, and uh, sometimes we'll light them up or put a spotlight on them to try to get them to stop instead of going north. Or if, if it's a large group, we'll tell Border Patrol exactly where we're at, and we'll tell them exactly the, the direction they're going, what the head count is, and they'll figure out their best interception point. If, if you in, encountered a group of, Im, of illegals, how would, they, um, how would they respond to a floodlight? Typically, they turn and run. They'll turn and run. And then, then some of them will just sit down and they'll just surrender because they're tired, hungry, thirsty, injured, and they'll just sit and wait to be picked up by Border Patrol. Others will run and they'll scatter throughout the desert. We rarely see threats from immigrants coming north. <clears throat> the threats we run into is with drug smugglers. And typically, they are armed. They'll typically send out a scout in front. And when they're walking through the desert, they'll have two to three armed men uh, with the drugs. And a lot of times they'll have flanks, flankers out left and right. So you have to be very careful. I thought they were going to stay down there to you. There was concern that we could be spotted from the interstate, so we moved still further west. The full harvest moon rose, giving us good light. Of course, it also gave the contrabandistas an easier trail to follow. We were on a BLM road just inside the Sonoran Desert National Monument. Immediately north of the road was a wash, a barbed wire fence, and Interstate 8. To the south were the Sand Tank Mountains, an Air Force bombing range, and Mexico. There were footprints in the wash between the road and the fence. There's some over in there too. With the wash on one side and Mexico on the other, there was a question as to which way to face. What we'll do is sit in front of the where you can see out because they're going to have to come from the south to get to the creek. And then we can probably also hear if they're in the creek coming out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we're going to face this way here? Yes, we'll watch for the, to the south like we always do. Okay. And then if they get in the this way and come around us and they want to go over highway that way, we should be able to hear them when the traffic dies down a little bit, if it does. As the moon ascended the sky, the sentinels sat silently with floodlights handy and waited. We watched the land to the south. A helicopter, possibly border patrol, moved southeasterly. We watched silently.
After no results in two hours, the operation was called off, and we returned to the FOB.